good evening. Welcome to Cornerstone. We're so happy you're here with us tonight in our midweek service for our prayer meeting. If you'll stand together with me, we're going to sing a new name written down in glory, a new name in glory. I was once a sinner. your name's written down in glory and you know that for certain. Pastor Mitchell, will you open some prayer, please? All right, remain standing. We're going to sing Heavenly Sunlight, Heavenly Sunlight.
great singing. You may be seated. Here's Pastor. Well, good evening. It's good to have you with us uh, tonight in our evening service. And I uh, just want to make you aware of some things. Um, anniversary offering has been going well, and uh, uh, I've had some uh, pretty good giving uh, in that. But uh, we're probably right around eight to nine thousand dollars short of our goal right now for getting everything total in for uh, the roof. So if you would like to continue to keep uh, uh, giving to that, we can uh, certainly use uh, the money. Uh, the trustees on Sunday uh, did compare all of the different um, bids that came in and uh, side by side what uh, compared what what each uh, place was each bid had and decided on uh, on one and uh, rewarding the contract to uh, to someone we all know uh, Jeff Woodhouse he had the the best uh, uh, overall what, what what he's going to do for the roof so uh, that'll get started in about three weeks and uh, he's got a crew member I think that's on vacation plus just trying to get the permits and and stuff to uh, to do that so uh, just be in prayer uh, about those things, and I do appreciate all the giving that has come in for that. And don't forget, uh, this Sunday morning, starting at 10 o'clock, is our revival. I've been uh, uh, corresponding back and forth with uh, Brother Dave McCracken. He's uh, uh, ready to go, and uh, we're certainly being uh, praying. And I hope that you are praying uh, that, that the Lord will uh, do a work in your life and the revival services on Sunday will be at 10 and 11 and at 6 p.m. And then Monday through Wednesday, uh, they'll be at 7 p.m. So uh, I'm excited about that and uh, certainly hope that you will uh, uh, be able to attend uh, all the services. There's only six. And, uh, uh, and I believe a lot of times one just builds right upon the other. And so you want to be here for all of those. And then uh, just a reminder that uh, we are having a trunk or treat and drive through. Uh, October the 31st, starting at 4 p.m. It's a Saturday. Uh, there's a bucket out underneath uh, the table where the uh, information board is. If you'd like to uh, buy some candy and uh, put that in there for them to give out. And then uh, James is also looking for the different stations. And then also we'll have uh, uh, about 20 yard signs. And uh, we just need people to volunteer to take a yard sign, put it in your yard so we can advertise for that. And uh, it's kind of our, it's our, not kind of, it's our community outreach uh, that we like to do and uh, get the gospel in people's hands as they come on our property. So uh, if you don't have a bulletin, there's some that are out there. You could read a little bit more about that. And then I uh, just want to remind the deacons that our deacons meeting has been pushed back a week because of revival. And we'll be meeting on October the 13th at, uh, at 6 p.m. And, uh, uh, and then... Um, there was something else. Oh, uh, the trustees, uh, we do have a meeting right after church tonight in the Young and Heart Room. You guys can just go immediately there. We can take care of business and be done with that. And uh, let's pray. And uh, thank you for your giving. And uh, uh, offering plates are up here. And uh, for you to give to, we're still not passing the plates or anything uh, like that. So uh, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer and uh, thanking him for uh, the offering. Father, we do indeed thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, the blessings that you continue to bestow upon our life, for the gifts that have been given, uh, Lord, not just in tithes, but also in offerings, Lord, to, uh, to keep our missionaries, Lord, on the field. And we thank you, Lord, for uh, the good reports that we have been getting back, uh, Lord, for the ones that were able to, to be on the field. And for those that are still stuck here in the United States, not able to go back, I pray, God, that you would just... Uh, help them and help their their churches lord as they a lot of them are struggling lord without their leadership there and i just pray god that you just bless uh, in that and lord i do uh, uh thank you uh, lord for the good gifts that have come in uh, to get the ceiling replaced or the uh, the roof replaced and i pray god that you would just help us to get all the monies in and uh, lord i pray that you just bless those that will be working on the building that you would just keep them safe lord as they do that and uh lord that you would uh uh, just watch over them. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. I hope everyone was able to get a prayer sheet tonight. So I do have some additions to add to it here in a couple minutes. If you did not, they're back of, out on the information desk. There's no video to save you tonight, so you have to endure me reading a missionary prayer letter. So tonight is the Boslers, 
are missionaries to Korea, and it reads, Greetings from the land of the morning calm. The stale heat and humidity of summer has given way to the fresh, clear air of fall. It is so refreshing to go out into the neighborhood and hear all the familiar sounds of people around us getting ready for school or work. In my mind, however, I wonder how many really know the joy of a loving relationship with Jesus. With all the uncertainty we live with, especially these days, not knowing if our families are safe from the dreaded virus is a real concern. But we who know Jesus as our Savior can have peace and joy even in the storms of life. The reason is that he is with us in those storms. We face the trials and tests of this life with a God who loves us and cares for us. Right now, we are locked out of our churches in Korea, not physically, but mandated from the government. Satan must be smiling from the pit of hell, thinking that he has won a great victory. We know that one victory will not win the war. We also know that the war has already been won. Satan just does not realize it. All we can do as Christians is to keep on keeping on. Pray for Victory Baptist Church, which is our newest work, for they are struggling with everything shut down. These new believers need your prayers as they search the scriptures to find answers for what is happening. Give me and Pastor No wisdom to help them find strength in God's word. We cannot visit our members or even pass out tracts on the street until the government gets a handle on the virus. We are doing social media and streaming of services. With my age, I had to have Pastor No fill me in on what all this stuff is. I just got a cell phone this year for the first time in Korea. We are also doing a lot of mailing to our people like the old days. Remember mail? Mary and I want to thank you for not giving up on missions. The world still needs to know that there is a Savior, Jesus, who loves them and died on a cross for them. He is our only hope. God bless you all, the Boslers missionaries to Korea. All right, the additions to the prayer sheet. Ray and Kenny Eubanks, whose father passed away, this is requested by Pastor Don. That's Ray and Kenny Eubanks. And then Jameson, who was born in July, tested positive has testing for possible stomach blockage. He's at the Peyton Manning's Children's Hospital, and this was requested by Tammy Lloyd. So that's Jameson, an infant born in July. And lastly, Ray Hankins, who has COVID. He's in ICU. He had a good day today with blood work and kidneys, and this was also requested by Tammy Lloyd, and this is a friend's uh, dad, and that's Ray Hankins. And then let me remind you to pray for Mrs. Mitchell, as she's going to be having shoulder surgery tomorrow at 3 p.m. All right, we'll have a time of prayer. You're welcome to come up to the altar, or you can pray in your seats, and in a couple minutes, I'll come back and I'll come and close out the prayer time.
God, we, we thank you for the way you've looked out for your churches over the last several months with, with the COVID virus. As we read our missionary prayer letters, you know, they've had to endure more, than, many of them more than what we've had to endure here, but you provided for them. We thank you for the Boslers and their work in Korea. We just pray as they begin to be able to get back out and to, to minister that you would just open people's hearts, encourage the people of their church, that they would not lose faith through what they've seen and witnessed through the last several months and realize you're in control and there's a purpose for everything. And then we would realize the same thing here. And as you give us opportunities, we would also take advantage and witness and not lose sight of the purpose while we're still here. We pray that as elections draw near that we would seek your guidance for who to vote for. We just pray that we would vote according to your principles, the ethics laid out in your word. We would seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit as various offices are filled to be in accordance to your will. And our country would not lose the fact that we are a Christian based and we would start to turn back to our roots so that we don't lose your blessings upon our nation. We pray for our youth programs as they meet tonight. We would just be with the workers, that each youth would gain something tonight, keep them safe in their various activities. Pray as Miss Mitchell has her surgery tomorrow. At first, that she would be able to have it, and then you would guide the doctors. It would be a success, and she'd have a complete recovery and a quick. Be with Pastor Mitchell as he cares for her. We see there. Have st we know several people now that have COVID, and we thank you for those that did, that you were healed up and raised up. And we pray for those that are currently battling it, that you would just be with them and comfort their family members. Pray for the Harrises as Barbara was in an accident yesterday. We thank you for looking out and protecting her as it could have been much worse. We pray that you would provide a, a new vehicle for them. Pray for Jerry Logston as her kidneys, the enzymes that you would just Guide the doctors in treating her. Cleon Womack with the spot on the stomach. That you would just, again, guide the doctors in ascertaining what's wrong there and the best treatment. Jeannie Berger with the testing she's having. Mary Anderson with the, the pacemaker and her spots that you would just continue to allow her to get the proper treatment. We pray for each and every person on the prayer list, although we can't mention each of them by name, that your will will be done, and your grace would flow into their lives. And we pray now for the Holy Spirit to come down and meet with us tonight as our pastor opens up your word, that we would incline our heart to what you'd have for us. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can remain seated for this um, next chorus that we're going to have. We're going to sing The Windows of Heaven Are Open. And when we're done with that song, the Harris Trio, the ladies are going to come and sing for us tonight. You're in for a real treat. I heard them in sound check, and they sounded really good. So, The windows of heaven are open.
Thank you, ladies. It certainly was a blessing watching Barbara sing for 26 years, and uh, it's nice to see her little mini-me's on either side of her, and uh, in that, and uh, they remind me a lot of her, uh, watching her grow up, and uh, that's such a blessing, and uh, just love to hear, I love to hear, I love to hear our church people sing. I, I really do. I just, I enjoy music, I enjoy the message, and uh, I certainly was blessed by that. Did get a... Uh, Call from David. David had a uh, had a flat tire today and didn't know if he was going to be here on time. And he said, didn't know if he'd be able to lead singing. I said, that's okay. I said, Brent will take care of it. <laughs> Brent got caught up on his prayer life between uh, that that text and Dave being here. And uh, he said he didn't think anybody would enjoy that. It was either him or pastor and uh, uh, to do that. So and uh, I was going to let him wrestle for it. And uh, in that, all right. Well. I got you laughing. Turn to uh, Exodus chapter number 20, if you would, please. Exodus chapter number 20. Remember to pray for, uh, uh, for Brother Dave and uh, uh, Penny and James as they travel over to Illinois tomorrow and uh, for his uh, Grandma Joe's um, uh, funeral and that they certainly be a blessing to all that are there. We have been studying in the Ten Commandments. And, uh, and these commandments help us to overcome a lot of the, the greatest challenges that come into our lives. And the eighth commandment is about integrity. And, uh, and it reads this way, thou shalt not steal. It's pretty simple, pretty easy to understand, right? Don't take what doesn't belong to you. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. As we found in all these commandments, as we've been studying, things go a little bit deeper. Now, this one reminds us that we should only acquire property through the biblical means and that we should honor God in our everyday lives so that we don't steal from his glory. Remember, we are reflections of Christ. Like many values uh, these days, integrity seems to be disappearing from our culture. you believe that's a true statement? Sure it is. It's just disappearing. Integrity, the, the, the things that we used to depend upon. I... I remember uh, my mom sending me next door to the neighbor's house who wasn't even home to borrow a couple of eggs or to get, the, get some sugar or whatever. And people used to leave their doors unlocked and, and left their cars unlocked. A lot of times people just left their keys in their car. And, uh, and they didn't have the, the crime that we have uh, now. 
Now, far from what many uh, think, however, integrity is not an ir irreverent word uh, from yesteryear. In a study done in 2005 of the words uh, looked up by some 7 million users of the Merriam-Webster online dictionary, some of the most looked up words for that year were refugee, filibuster, and tsunami. But the number one word that was looked up that year was the word integrity. Integrity. I'll let you do your own research to see what was going on in 2005. It's kind of interesting. Now, God's word is always relevant, and the truth about integrity is vital for us today. I don't know about you. I don't know what side of the aisle you're on, but uh, uh, I turned on the debate for a little bit last night. And all I heard was, that's not true, liar. That's not true, liar. That's not true, liar. And each, each side is, is, uh, is calling each other integralists. I know that's not a word. I just made it up. And uh, in that, but, but they, they saw them without integrity. So why do we see such a lack of integrity uh, today? Why, why do we see so many murders? I mean, you turn on the news and it, it's almost like you almost dread to, to hear, and then uh, you start looking. I have a ring doorbell, and I get a report when it's shots fired in this neighborhood, and, and and things. And it's coming from our ring doorbell here that we have at church by the office, and uh, so many things that that go on. It's it's just it's scary. Now, why do we we have so much stealing? So many people that are committing adultery, all those things. Well, it's because. We, as a nation, have forgotten God and his commandments. These commandments used to be posted everywhere you went. But now people don't want to see them posted. Why? Because then they would be held accountable for that. I remember the very first speeding ticket I ever got. I got uh, uh, going too fast on a dirt road. I had never, in, in, in all of my days of driving, I was still 16, had ever seen a speed limit on that road. But sure enough, it was right where the police officer said it was. And sure enough, I was going faster than what was posted. You know, a lot of times we just kind of want to ignore that. We want to ignore uh, the rules that are there. But I'm, I'm seeing and I found that as we get farther away from God that the values in our life get farther away from God as well. We begin to change, and then that change is not for the good. And as we learned in our first lesson in this series, the God that you worship will shape the values you hold. Let me say that again. The God that you worship will shape the values that you hold. And I hope that you do have values. I do hope that you, uh, you, you have those within you. Now, when we worship the God of self, we will reflect the selfish values in our everyday lives. But when we worship the God of the Bible, we will reflect the godly priorities, his godly priorities in our everyday life. Stealing, like all other sins begins where? It begins in the heart. It begins in the heart and is later revealed in our outward actions. Now, like all the commandments that we have studied, there are more, there's more to this commandment than first appears. Now, in this lesson, we're going to examine three uh, uh, areas in which we need to develop integrity. Where we work, where we live, and where we worship. Let's look at the first one, keeping integrity where you work. Now, many employers are concerned about, uh, about theft from within and from without. I remember when I was in Bible college, I worked at the Sears store there in the, uh, in the mall in Springfield, Missouri. And uh, I enjoyed my job there. I enjoyed the people that I worked with. I really liked my boss, Larry Ray. He's a good Christian man. 
and uh, had some very godly values and uh, uh, come to find out that the uh, seventh and eighth grade class that my wife and I volunteered to work in while we were in Bible college, his son was in there, uh, got to meet him, but I just really enjoyed uh, my boss. But while we were there, I found out that we had a loss prevention guy. And uh, you'd see him walking around the store. You'd see he had an old private office with a bunch of cameras and stuff. And they had cameras throughout the store. And they were always watching for people shoplifting. But they weren't just watching for the people shoplifting. They were also watching the employees to make sure things weren't going out the back door, so to speak. Well, this guy was pretty tough. And most people, you know, just when he came around, just kind of straightened up. But you know, not everybody has integrity. It wasn't long before this guy got fired because he was stealing from the company. And uh, he was, what he was supposed to be doing, he wasn't doing. Now, how can we maintain inte- integrity in a workplace? Well, as a Christian... You uh, ought to give your very best to your place of work and honor to, to, uh, so that you can honor the Lord that you represent. Remember we talked about everywhere that we go, we have Christ in us. We were talking about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit on Sunday. And everywhere we go, we take the Holy Spirit with us. And as people find out uh, about our Christianity, they expect us to act different. Even people that aren't believers expect Christians to act different. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17, the word of God tells us this. And whatsoever ye do in word, in what we say, or deed, in what we do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Now, it's important for us uh, to have a good testimony. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit uh, to others. But the, the word of God just makes it clear to us. For whatsoever ye do in word or deed and everything, and what we say and what we do should reflect Christ. Now, one thesaurus had 138 uh, uh, sin, sin and, oh man, it's not cinnamon. Yeah, you know what word I'm trying to say. And uh, uh, for the word still. Now, the word, uh, it is a word that uh, has many expressions as well. Some people who still just say, well, I'm not stealing. I'm just prolonged borrowing. I've just kept it for a while. How many of you guys have tools that somebody's been prolonged borrowing for a while? Sure. You know, you, you, you see a tool in somebody else's bag and say, I used to have one of those. Well, I know it's yours. I've been meaning to give it back to you. And uh, in that, or uh, you, there's the word of, uh, I'm just appropriating some things. God simplified all these uh, uh, into one command, and he said, thou shalt not steal. In other words, don't take what doesn't belong to you. Now, how many of us knew that lesson pretty early in life? Sure we did. We learned that lesson. That's probably one of the very first lessons uh, that we learned. You don't take what doesn't belong to you. I remember uh, as an older brother, I used to like to walk one of my sisters down to 7-Eleven. And I would, um, there was, they were building a highway close to our house and there was a golf course that was there. And a lot of times it would get flooded and we would uh, go into the waters and get a bunch of golf balls out. And then as golfers came by, we'd sell them to them for a quarter. Well, back in that day, a quarter could get you two candy bars and some penny candy. And so we, we would do that. And I would take my sister every once in a while and uh, down there. The only problem was that she was a thief. I remember one time walking out of 7-Eleven and I was real happy. I had a little bag of candy for her. And, uh, and she's like, look what I got. I didn't have any more money. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do? She had had a couple of candy bars and some other things stuffed in her pocket. She just saw me picking stuff up. So she, I guess she thought she could pick stuff up too. Uh, in that and uh, so be careful I don't know where that came from oh thou shalt not steal now employees a lot of times steal from their employers in more ways than just shoplifting how about when you arrive late if you're supposed to be on the job at a certain time they expect you to be there at a certain time what about taking that extended lunch time 
I know I'm supposed to have this. Uh, I remember people uh, at, at one of the places, first place I ever worked at that had a time clock, knew how to work that clock, how to get a few extra minutes out because if they clocked out at this time, they could clock back in at this time and still it would only show a half hour uh, in that. What about while you're supposed to be at work just talking excessively instead of doing what you're supposed to do? Or perhaps while you're there at work using uh, your work time to pursue personal projects. One survey reported that the average employee, uh, this I find very incredible, the average employee steals about six weeks per year from their employer. Now, most of us would think, well, you mean six days. No, it's, I, I, I double-checked it, six, um, six weeks, not six days per year. I almost said six years and uh, in that from their employer. You know, we are expected to give our boss the full hours due him. Don't selfishly steal time from, uh, from them which uh, are paying you to work or from those who are paying you to work. Word of God tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28, it says, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Now, work is an opportunity for, uh, is, uh, is an opportunity from God to glorify him. We can glorify God in our work and in our work ethic. Uh, we are told in Colossians chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as man pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. You know what? My work ethic should be doing all things to glorify the Lord's name. I don't want to bring shame to the family name. None of us do. And so for me, in my singleness of heart, whatever I am employed to do, whatever it is that I'm supposed to be doing, that is what I need to be doing to bring glory to God. And uh, uh, in that, it also tells us in verse 23, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. If I was to ever show up to your place of employment... I would not be surprised to hear that the greatest IT people go to our church. Those conscientious workers at the zoo that we have here. I, I, that shouldn't surprise me. I shouldn't go, oh, really, those guys? Why? Because if, as, if they're working as unto the Lord, the best employee for uh, the company that he works for it should be sitting in here right now. In, in whatever job uh, that you do because we should be bringing glory to our Father's name. Now, we should strive to be diligent in our work and set a good example for others to follow. Now, when employees give their best to their employers, integrity comes back to the workplace. And it's good to have people that work hard. Uh, when, uh, when I was working there at Sears, was it long before we had we had uh, a lot of college uh, people? We had some from BBC and some from the secular college, but you know what? We fed off each other, and it, it was uh, just a, a good place to work, and it was a challenging uh, place to work uh, along with the others, trying to do the best job that we possibly uh, could. Now, not only should we be good employees, but if you are an employer, we need to be a blessing to our employees. Now. It is a tragedy when employers do less than their best to help uh, uh, those who are working for them. God addresses this problem throughout Scripture. Listen to these Scriptures. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 1 says this, Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master uh, in heaven. You know what? God is watching how we treat those who, who are under our employ. And uh, um, I remember the first time that I was a, a boss and I had somebody working under me. Uh, I, I really almost didn't know what to do. 
and because uh, I'd always worked for somebody, but I wanted to make sure that I treated uh, uh, this person well, and that uh, that I worked as hard, if not harder, than than they did, and it became just a, a good uh, a place to work, because there was just two of us. There was me, and then there was uh, this young lady that that worked for me, and uh, and, and and it was good, and uh, I appreciated. Uh, her work ethic, and, uh, and I hope that she appreciated mine. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 27 tells us this, Withhold not good from them in whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. We need to make sure that we treat people not only equally and fair, but that we just treat people right uh, that are working for us. Then it tells us in, in James chapter 5 and verse 4, it says, Behold, uh, the hire of the laborers, who have reaped down your fields, which is uh, of you, kept back fraud, crieth, and the cry of them which have reaped have entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. We want to make sure that, uh, that we are doing right by the employees. Now, when you as an employer uh, increase your employees' burden because of your stinginess, God hears the cries and will hold you accountable. It's important for us to have integrity in our workplace, whether we're an employee or whether we're an employer. And, uh, and if both of us are striving to do our, 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 our part, then that would be great for, for all that are involved. And, uh, and it needs to be upheld in both uh, directions. Then the second thing that we uh, need to keep our integrity in is, is keeping our integrity where you live. Integrity and honesty do not uh, apply to the job only, but it also applies in the home. There was a Sunday school teacher who was instructing her class about the difference between right and wrong. All right, children, she said, let's see another example. Now, if I were to get into a man's pocket and take his billfold and all of his money, what would I be? Little Johnny, with the biggest smile on his face, ra uh, raised his hand and with a big smile blurted out, you'd be his wife. Very smart men that didn't say amen there. All right, in that. And uh, now that's not quite the integrity that we're talking about. And, uh, but uh, really, uh, how can we manage our households with integrity? What are, what are some ways? Well, number one uh, is this. Pay your loans. Pay your bills. It should be important for uh, those. I remember one time... Uh, we were refinancing uh, our house and uh, going from a, 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 an adjustable loan to a fixed loan. And in talking to the, uh, uh, to the loan officer, uh, she said, because uh, there was somebody else uh, uh, from our church that was getting a loan too, and she said, you know, I've never seen, you, we, we, we rarely see people who work at churches have such good credit as you two have. Said it's rare. And I thought, man, that's a shame. I mean, I understand sometimes things are beyond our control, but really we, we ought to be people who can, can, can pay our bills. Now, one person defined integrity this way. It said, integrity is keeping my commitment even when the circumstances around my commitment have changed. You know what, sometimes things happen and we need to do our very best uh, to take care of those. Now, in Psalms 15, 4 describes a man of integrity as a man uh, that uh, sweareth his own hurt and changes not. Now, that little phrase there, changes not, means this, to keep his word, although it's going to cause him great sacrifices. Sometimes we just have to make the sacrifice to do what is right. So uh, what are some ways that we can avoid debt? Well, number one, uh, don't charge uh, things hoping that the money will be there at the end of the month. If there's anything that can get us in trouble in a hurry, it's what? It's credit cards. It's credit cards. I mean, we were trained, we were trained early. If you ever watched the Flintstones and you saw uh, Betty and, and Wilma, they would have that card in their hand and they'd go, charge! It. I didn't know what it meant. You know, I didn't even know what a credit card was. I remember the first time my mom had one. I was like, well, what's that? It's called a credit card. What's that mean? You can buy stuff without any money? 
And uh, I remember when we were in Bible college, we were driving past a pizza hut. And, uh, and Crystal goes, I want to I wanna go to Pizza Hut. Tanya said, well, honey, we, we, we don't have any money. She goes, you got a checkbook. <laughs> you know, you can't write checks if money's not there. And uh, how many people understand that? Yeah, sure. All right. Now, we need to uh, learn to only charge what we know that we can pay off at the end of the month. One lady was very eager to control her runaway financial habits, so she called her credit card company and says, I want to pay off my MasterCard. I said, sure. She goes, do you take Visa? You know, you're not going to get anything paid off in a hurry. I mean, how many of us look and get that stuff in the mail and says, hey, you could just roll all of your things into this one credit card and uh, in that and uh, have a high interest rate and stuff. But anyway, so don't charge again. Number two, we need to learn to practice com contentment. We need to be thankful for the things that God has provided for us. We should be thankful. When was the last time you just sat in your living room or you sat in your kitchen and started thanking God for all the things that are there? That you have a working stove. That you have a working microwave. That you have a working refrigerator. None of us should ever have a broken dishwasher as long as we have two hands. Well, right now, Keith's dishwasher is broken. She's, right? No. I'm trying to help you out. And, uh, oh, you have four kids. That, that's right. And uh, in that, that's right, you have four kids. And uh, so, but, uh, but really, when was the last time? I mean, seriously, you just thanked God for the things that you have. I mean, for the, I mean, how many of you all plan on going home and going to bed? When was the last time you thanked God for the bed that you have? There are a lot of people that don't have some of the things that we have. And we should be thankful for that and be contented with the things we have. We need to make sure that we don't allow our hearts to develop discontentment by wishing for that which God has not given us. You know, I, there's nothing wrong with, with wanting something until that want gets ahead of God. I mean, God has certainly blessed us with, with, with many, many things. And, and a lot of times I, I sit back and I look and uh, um, and I just just wonder at the blessings of God. And I can look and, and remember where we bought that or where we got this or, or how we obtained that, and, and it's just great. But do I sometimes look at, you know, maybe a, a house that's bigger or, you know, a, a car or, you know, uh, you look at some of these new trucks and think, boy, would I look good in that. But you know what? I'm content with the truck I have. I'm thankful for the car that I have. I'm thankful for the house that I have. The Bible tells us this in Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 16. It says, it's better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble uh, and trouble therein. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therein. We should be thankful for the things we have. And then not only do we need to uh, practice contentment, but you know what? We need to pray before we buy. We need to resist impulse buying by delaying uh, any purchase until you've asked the Lord if that's what he wants for your life. You know, is this, Lord, uh, really you, what you want me to have? Is this in your timing? The Bible tells us in Proverbs 21, verse 5, it says, The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plentiness. But of everyone that is hasty, only to want. We need to be careful. Be careful. And uh, especially in, when, when it comes to impulse buying. Then not only do we need to pay our bills, but we need to make restitution. Now, integrity demands that when we have wronged someone, that we take the initiative to make it right. We have a biblical example found in Luke chapter number 19 when it comes to Zacchaeus. Many of us know the story how Zacchaeus uh, was, a, was a tax collector. He wasn't just a tax collector. He was the chief of tax collectors. So he cheated the tax collectors who were cheating the people in order to uh, obtain his money. And when he heard that Jesus was coming, he was a short of stature, so he climbed up in a tree. And when Jesus was walking, and you have to understand, there was a, just a bunch of people around him that Jesus stopped, looked up in the tree, and said, Zacchaeus. Jesus knows my name. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? 
He said, you come down. Today I'm going to abide in your house. He's going to have fellowship with him. Now, all the religious people were in shock. He's going to go eat with the sinner. But you know what? Somewhere between climbing down that tree and getting to the ground, he had a change of heart. And he said, Lord, he says, half my goods I'm giving to the poor. And then for everyone that I have cheated, I'm going to repay fourfold. He had a change of heart. He had a change of heart. It tells us in Luke chapter 19, verse 8, it says, And Zacchaeus stood and said, uh, I just pretty much told you what it said, so you can see that and, uh, in that. Now, uh, we who already know Christ should be quick to make honest restitution for those we've wronged. And then we need to make a fair and an honest living. We need to charge a fair price for the, our business dealings. Now, in the Bible days, uh, people used balance scales to buy and sell corn. Unjust merchants would adjust the weight in their favor so that they could cheat the people out of what, uh, uh, what they really owed them for uh, the product. The Lord spoke through the prophet Amos and, uh, about this, and he said this, Amos chapter 8, verses 4 through uh, 5 say this, Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon uh, be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath and that um, they may set forth wheat, making the if small and the shekel great and, false, and falsifying the balances of debt? We need to make sure that we don't cheat people out of what we, what we owe them. Now, most of us know about President Abraham Lincoln. What was his nickname? Honest Abe. You know how he got that nickname? He, he, was, he was an honest person, but the story that's told is that in, he found out in his business dealings that he had uh, um, uh, inadvertently overcharged a customer. And so he walked six miles to give them back three cents. Now, we don't think it was that much money in, in our day now. But it was to him in that day. And he wanted to make sure that he made it right. How many of you, when somebody at the cash register gives you back too much cash or too much coin, so excuse me and give it back? Most people think, well, hey, it was their mistake. I remember working at an ice cream store back when we didn't have all the mechanical thing and we had that ch -ch 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 type of um, cash, cash whatever thing. Register. Register, there you go, thank you. And, uh, uh, and you know, and so you had to use your, you had to use your, your, your mind in, in order to add everything up and stuff. And, and sometimes when we were really busy in the ice cream uh, store, I used to hate to work that, that thing to have to work the money. I'd rather just dip the ice cream and uh, in that. But you know what? Uh, there were a couple of times where I'd messed up, where I had, had to go make it right. Remember, I learned a really good lesson. One time I was working at a taco time, and I was working the drive through window, and I forgot to put something in a bag. And the guy said, I'm not coming back. You bring it to me. And the manager said, it's the right thing to do. It, there was a snowstorm outside. But I had to drive to go take two uh, cartons of chocolate milk to this guy. But you know what? I learned to make sure everything was in the bag after that. It was a good, it was a good lesson. Now, we need to work diligently the work that God has given us. We are told in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 11, Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. We need to make sure that uh, we, we earn our keep. In closing, for tonight, tells us, Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. From your employer, from your employee, from your creditor, from your client, thou shalt not steal. In other words, be known for your integrity in every aspect of your life. Let's stand together.
Brother Dave, I'm just going to have her play and uh, have a, uh, just have her play and have a verse of invitation. And uh, if you need to come to the altars, the altars will be open uh, for you. And, uh, but I just want to encourage you that, uh, uh, to be the best of the best, whether you're at home or whether you're at, at work. And we'll talk in a couple of weeks about keeping integrity in, at where you worship. And it is important that we don't steal from the glory of God. But, but it's important for us to, to get our hearts uh, ready also for the revival that is coming up. And uh, maybe let's just take a, take a moment, we've got a, a minute or so, and let's just pray, and then I'll have a dismissal word of prayer. And then uh, don't forget, trustees, uh, that we'll be meeting in the Young at Heart room. Well, go ahead and play. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, your word. We thank you, Lord, for the commandments, Lord, that we are uh, uh, just restudying, Lord, and looking back upon. And I just pray, God, that we would we would take the lessons, Lord, as they are learned in the different verses, Lord, that go along with that from both the Old and New Testament, that we would learn to memorize some of those and apply them to our lives. And, Lord, that you'd help us, Lord, to not just be people of integrity, but help us to teach that to others as well. Lord, just help us, Heavenly Father, Lord, to be good witnesses to those who employ us and, Lord, for those that we employ. And I just pray, Lord, that you would uh, uh, bless there. Lord, I pray that you give us wisdom and, uh, Lord, and how to serve you better. We love you and we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you bestow upon our lives. Just dismiss us with your blessings. For we ask this in your precious name. And pray, Lord, you especially be with Mrs. Mitchell tomorrow as she has her shoulder surgery. For we ask this in your precious name. Amen. Mm-hmm.